Hey CCF, so uh, this summer we are doing uh, Colossians for our summer uh, Catalyst uh, Bible study series. And uh, we wanted to invite you guys to kind of join along with us as we teach through Colossians. And what we're going to be doing for um, these eight weeks is each one who is uh, teaching um, and, and whoever's tasked for teaching that night is going to do kind of a shortened um, devotion on that section of their teaching uh, that we're going to put on YouTube every Thursday night, still uploaded at 7 o'clock, for any of you guys to join in on. And so what I want to do tonight is uh, I want to uh, read through um, our passage. And so if you have your Bible, feel free to uh, get it open to Colossians chapter 1, uh, verses 1 through 14. And then I want to invite you guys to participate in on um, two things that we're going to be doing tonight as a group together as well. Uh, and the first one is that I want to invite you to uh, watch the Bible Project video on the book of Colossians. And we're going to put a link to that in the bottom, but otherwise you can just search it on YouTube, Bible Project Colossians. That's going to give you a great overview of what this letter is from Paul to the um, Church of Colossae. And um, it's just going to give you a great understanding as we kind of jump into some in-depth study of this book. And so join with me as we read uh, verses 1 through 14. Paul, an apostle of Christ Jesus, by the will of God, and Timothy our brother, to the saints and faithful brothers in Christ at Colossae, grace to you and peace from God our Father. We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you. Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints, because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. Of this you have heard before in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you, as indeed in the whole world it is bearing fruit and increasing, as it also does among you, since the day you heard it and understood the grace of God and truth. Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our fellow beloved ser servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on, our, on your behalf and has made known to us your love in the Spirit. And so from this day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might for all endurance and patience with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints of light. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. And so one of the things that I find really interesting about the letter of Colossians is that Paul uh, most likely wrote this letter while he was in prison. And then beyond that, Paul writes this letter to a church that he has never met and he didn't found either. Um, he, we see that in verse 7 where he says, Just as you learned it from Epaphras, our beloved fellow servant, he is a faithful minister of Christ on your behalf. And so Paul is writing as an apostle, and obviously he has the authority of an apostle to write to any believer in any time. But um, I find it interesting that he, he finds it so um, uh, applicable and so um, important to write to a church that he has never met and a church that he didn't even found. And so kind of going off of that, uh, I want to invite you guys to participate in something that we're going to be doing tonight. And what we're going to be doing tonight is we're going to be kind of following along with Paul. And I'm going to be asking all of our students to um, think of a church in Rala area or maybe in their home, hometown area. And it's a church that, that they don't go to. And so I want to invite you guys to think of a church that you don't go to that you know is doing really good things. And I want to encourage you to pray for them in the same way that Paul is praying for them. And also, if you want to go to the next step beyond, to write a letter of encouragement and let them know that you're praying for them. A lot of churches, as I've been talking to um, pastor friends, are, are going through a lot right now, trying to figure out you know, how to reopen, how to do that safely, how to do that in the best way that they can for their members, and also in accordance with the, the different guidelines that are coming through, and especially depending on what state you're in. Um, there's a lot of pressure, and there's a lot of pressure from, from even members, that um, whether they feel safe or, or even unsafe. And um, so there's a lot of pressure on pastors and elders of churches and ministers around. And, and I want to encourage you guys to uh, take some time to pray for a church that you've never met, maybe even a church that you've never been to, but that you know is a good church doing good things. And so then beyond that, I want to encourage you to pray um, some of these same points. And if you're writing a card, to write down and let them know that you're praying for them in some of these same ways. 
And I think some of the most applicable ones that we see here are in verses 4, 9, 10, and 11. So verse 4 says, Since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and of the love that you have for all the saints because of the hope laid up for you in heaven. And so uh, this, if you're writing a letter, I would encourage you to model this as your um, intro to say, hey, you know, I don't go to your church. I, I'm not a member there, but I, I, I know that you guys are doing good things. I know that you are believers in Christ. I know that we have the same shared hope in Jesus. And then verse nine, it, it says, and so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will and in all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And so for both your prayer and also even in your letter that you may write, I want to encourage you to pray that this specific church that you've identified will have um, understanding and wisdom and discernment, not just from the world, but from God. And specifically in regards to our current times and reopening and trying to address uh, coming back together and doing it safely and doing it wisely and that you are praying for their church to have this spiritual wisdom from God. And then the next one is verse 10. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. This is another thing that we can be praying for, for our brothers and sisters in Christ at churches that we don't go to. We can be praying that, that they can open up in a, in a way that is not only good and safe and, and the best way possible, but that they would be able to continue to find good and creative ways to reach their members, to reach their community, to bear fruit, as Paul says in verse 10. And then the last kind of main point I want to bring up is verse 11. He says, May you be strengthened with all power according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints of light. And so this is the last one that I, I think would be good for us to pray together for these churches that we've identified and, and, and to write in our letters to just pray that they would be strengthened, that they would be strengthened not through what the world gives us or the hope of this world, but through the hope of Jesus Christ and strengthened and given power and given um, that, that hope to persevere through some pretty crazy times that we're living in and to persevere and to, to push through the, the tough uh, ways of, of, of trying to minister to people differently, to try to reaching out to communities in different ways. But so I want to encourage you guys to, to take these first 14 verses of Paul as a model for you to use for your prayer of churches and, and to kind of take it beyond just praying for your church. Um, think of the, 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 um, the kingdom of God as the community of God as a whole. And so I want to encourage you guys to uh, join with us in, in doing this and, and actually not only praying, but also writing, writing a note, writing it and sending it or dropping it off at a local church that you don't go to, but the, you are now going to be praying for and writing them a letter of encouragement during this time. Thanks for tuning in, guys, and I hope that this has been helpful. And uh, make sure to check our YouTube page every, uh, every Thursday night. We're going to be uh, working through all of this with you guys together. I can't wait.